Good morning. Thank you for coming this morning and worshiping together. This is the fourth Sunday we've not been able to gather together, but thank you, Lord, for the resurrection. We come this morning in celebrating maybe the most important event in Scripture, and that is the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. But before we go there, we want to remember our nation, our country. We want to continue to remember those who are personally being affected with the coronavirus virus and I understand in some shape and form almost everyone is being affected but for many of us we have not experienced those who have had the virus and we've not experienced those who have lost loved ones due to the virus and so as we may be going on day by day let us not forget as brothers and sisters in Christ to hold up those who are being maybe more affected by the virus than some of us are. I thank the Lord today that we can find hope in Jesus Christ. Our hope is in the Lord. Our hope in knowing that God has all things working together for good to those who love Him and those who are called according to His purpose. And so this morning, as we go before the Lord in prayer, let us remember and be thankful at the same time. Our Heavenly Father, as we come this morning, I want to thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy that began so many thousand years ago. As you told Adam and Eve and promised to them that you would send a Redeemer, that you would send someone in hopes for their shortcomings, for their sinfulness. And Lord, throughout history, you said it again and again. And Lord, it came to pass some 2,000 years ago. And we come today in celebration and praising and thanking you, Lord, that you fulfilled your promise, that your son, Jesus Christ, loved us enough to come and to go through the unjust beatings and the mocking and to die on Calvary's cross, only to rise again on the third day that we would have hope today, that we come today to have a reason to celebrate and to rejoice. And Lord, in the midst, we do not want to forget those our country is facing something we've never faced before. We continue to work day to day with the unknown. And Lord, there's those today who have been affected by this virus far more than many of us. And so, Lord, it is our prayer today that you will just encourage, show your grace and your mercy and your love, and remind those who find themselves in the midst of this serious situation that you have not forsaken them. Lord, we come today to say thank you, Lord, and ask all of these things in your precious Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. We come this morning, and last week we looked at Jesus entering into Jerusalem. And this week for our church family, I've sent out a, a daily devotion that reminded us of, of the last week of Jesus' life. And we left off last Sunday with the celebration and them laying down the palms and laying down their clothes and rejoicing and singing hallelujah to Jesus Christ as he entered into Jerusalem. And we were reminded and looked into Scripture on Monday that Jesus entered into the temple and there he ran out the money changers and turning over tables and made the, the statement, my house shall be, shall be called a house of prayer. Then on Tuesday, we seen that he was very busy. He went about back to the temple teaching and encouraging and trying to get the religious leaders to understand who he was with very little effect. Wednesday, we see that Jesus, the scripture doesn't say a whole lot of what Jesus did, but it does say that there was an unnamed woman who came and anointed Jesus' body, realizing that he was soon to die. And also we've seen that that was the day that Judas went to the religious leaders to make that deal to betray Jesus. On Thursday we see there was another busy day, maybe the most busy day of all. Well, we've seen that Jesus sent out his disciples to, to prepare for the Passover feast. And later that evening they celebrated the Passover but Thursday also we go to John and we realize that Jesus spent much of that day encouraging and teaching the disciples of what to come was to come. We also recognize that Thursday was the night that Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane. 
And there he prayed, and there he sought God's presence and the Spirit's power to enable him to further go through with the work that he had come to do. Thursday night, early Friday morning, Judas betrayed him. He was arrested, and the unjust trials began. Peter denied him just as he said he would. You know, on Friday we see that the unjust trials and the beatings and the mocking continued, and we see that Jesus was went to the cross bearing the burdens, and there he was nailed, and there he died for the sinfulness of mankind. On Saturday we see that the tomb was sealed, guards set up, in fear that the disciples might take Jesus' body. But folks, the religious leaders, all the guards, all the ceiling, ceiling in the world could not keep Jesus in the grave. And here comes Sunday, the resurrection. And there the tomb was revealed to mankind that Jesus was not there, not because he was stolen, but because his body had been risen, the resurrection. And this morning, I guess in a roundabout way, I want to look at the resurrection by witnesses. We're not going to look at the very fact that Jesus rode and the purpose of it per se, but we are going to look at the witnesses. And you and I know that wit witnesses are so important of any event. And it's when the, the, the witnesses begins, testimony begins to be put together piece by piece that it all comes together to get the full picture. And I thought this morning, rather than just preaching on the fact that Jesus had risen, Rather than necessarily going to 1 Corinthians 15 to say that, that, to show that Jesus is risen, I just want to look at the witnesses. I want to look at those who saw Jesus for themselves and how they responded and how Jesus responded to them. I want to begin with the angels themselves. The angels was the first who would announce and who realized that Jesus had risen from the grave. As Mary and the other women was coming to the tomb, they begin, you can look at Scripture and see where they were discussing, hey, we're coming to the tomb, but how in the world are we going to roll away the stone? As they entered upon the tomb, they quickly realized that the stone had been rolled away. The angels was there, and they announced the encouraging words to the women who had gone to the tomb this morning and they said to them do not be afraid for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified he is not here he is not, he is risen and he said come see the place where the Lord laid and so the women the the angels was the first to know and yet the first to share that Jesus had risen also I do not want to forget the guards those who were sent there by authority to guard the tomb to make sure Jesus' body did not go anywhere, and they too witnessed the fact that Jesus had risen. In fact, we see first, the Scripture says in Matthew 28, 4, and the guards shook for fear of him and become like dead men. As the earthquake came, as the angels spoke, as Jesus was gone from the tomb, it shook them up. And they did not attempt to cover it up. They left there, some of the guards, and went and told the religious leaders what had taken place. Now, you and I know by reading Scripture that the religious leaders paid the guard not to tell the truth. But the guards could not ignore the truth. Jesus was alive. After the angels speaking to Mary and the other women, the Scripture tells us that Mary goes in one direction and the other women goes in the other direction. The scripture tells us that Mary Magdalene went to tell Peter and the other disciple, while we do not know exactly which disciple it was, she went to tell them. The other women went to tell the other disciples. At this point, neither Mary Magdalene nor the women understood or knew or had seen, I should say, seen Jesus rise from the dead. But they went to tell the other disciples. The Scripture tells us that Mary Magdalene and Peter and the other disciple went back to the tomb. Peter and the other disciple went into the tomb. They looked in the tomb. 
Jesus wasn't there. And the scripture tells us that Peter and the other disciple went back to where they came from, but Mary stayed. And this passage of Scripture is one of the most encouraging passages of Scripture to me that we can see and recognize how much Jesus cares for people. The Bible says in John 20 and verse 10, Then the disciples went away again to their own homes, but Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. While broken, uncertain that Jesus had risen, yes, she had been told, but she had not... uh, She did not have the confidence to know that it was so. And she was broken. She loved Jesus. Jesus had done so much for her. She was broken. And Jesus appears to her. We're reading in John 20, 11. And as she wept, as she was broken, she stooped down and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had laid then they said to her woman why are you weeping she said to them because they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him now when she had said this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus Jesus said to her woman why are you weeping whom are you seeking She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Teacher. There that moment she recognized who she thought was a gardener was Jesus. Now the scripture doesn't really say how she recognized him other than the voice of of the words of Jesus but there was something in his tone something in his words her understanding by the Holy Spirit of God enlightened her but whatever it was she recognized that Jesus was there Jesus had risen and of all the disciples and the followers of Jesus Mary was the first to understand and to see and to recognize that Jesus was alive no longer dead The grave and the tomb could not hold Jesus. And we continue to read. The Bible says that Mary Magdalene went back and told the disciples what what she had seen, what had happened. And as you continue to read the Scripture, comparing the four Gospels together, we understand that Jesus then reveals himself to the other women. The Bible says in Matthew 28, And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice. So they came and held him by his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. And we come today in a celebration, recognizing and understanding as believers that Jesus is alive. And for those who have come and placed their faith in Jesus, we too want to hold and worship the Lord because we know what He has done for us and we know the change He has made in us. And I want to remind us this morning, there may be someone here who does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You may be looking at it now, you may believe looking at it later, but you may recognize that I've never truly trusted in Jesus. For the believer, it is the most important day of our lives because we have experienced the transformation, the change because of the resurrection we have. We now have the peace, the hope, the joy, the assurance. But as a non-believer, you may be hearing this message this morning and you may say, I don't know. Well, let me remind you that all of us at one time was a non-believer. At one time, we walked where you walk today. And we didn't really understand the resurrection. We didn't really understand the importance of We really didn't understand the change that comes into a person's life when we place our trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that He's died uh, for our sinfulness, that He died on Calvary's cross, that He rose again the third day, that we come to the place and ask Him to forgive us and to put our faith and trust in Him. And until you do that, you too, 
with all your understanding, would not be able to understand the transformation that comes. It only comes the moment we place our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. So yes, as believers, we now worship the Lord. We have seen and understand, not physically, but we understand spiritually that Jesus has risen because of the transformation He's made in our lives. After appearing to the Mary Magdalene and other women, the Scripture says they appear to Peter. We don't know anything about that other than it says that He had appeared to Peter. But then we go in the story, the scripture tells us that Jesus appeared to the two men walking to Emmaus. And you may remember the story that these men was going back from Jerusalem to Emmaus and there was discouraged and they was defeated and they didn't really understand all that had taken place. That Jesus had died, he had been put into the tomb. And yet, as they was walking the road, Jesus appears. And we know the story that they walked for a while and they did not really understand what Jesus was saying to them. And then we come to verse 32. And the two men said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while we talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? Again, let me remind those that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ that when you come to understand that Jesus is alive, that he's real, that He's come for you. Your understanding is opened. Things are different. But until you come to know the Lord, it will still not be clear to you. After Jesus appearing to the two men, walking to Emmaus, we see that Jesus appeared to the disciples with Thomas absent. Thomas being one of the disciples where he were, was, we do not know, the Scripture does not say, but he was not with the other disciples. In John 20, verse 19, it says, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples was glad when they saw the Lord. Can you imagine? As Jesus stood before them, he just entered into the room. He encourages them by saying, Peace be to you. He knew at this point the disciples did not believe that he had risen. Yes, he had taught them for three years. Yes, on Thursday he explained to them in details that he would go to the cross, that he would die, they would rise again. But still at this point, they did not fully comprehend what Jesus was saying. And yet he came Jesus did not come with judgment. He did not come with condemnation. But he came with encouraging words. And he says to them, peace. The scripture tells us there they understood and seen and realized that Jesus had risen. As far as scripture says, that is those that he appeared to on that first resurrection Sunday. But as you continue to read Scripture, you see that throughout the 40 days that Jesus was here on earth before He went back to be with His Father, that He appeared to others. And I want to continue to look at those witnesses. The Scripture says eight days later, Jesus appeared to the disciples again. This time Thomas was there. And if you know anything about Thomas, he's called Doubting Thomas because he stood so firm unless he, he could touch Jesus, unless he was able to, to hold on to him, he would not believe. In John 20, 25, it says, Thomas says, Unless I see in his hands and the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. This is one of his own followers that had been with him for three years. But we see as you read Scripture that when Jesus appeared, it was something different. Again, when Jesus becomes a part of our life and we recognize who He is, it just changes us. In verse 27, Jesus said to Thomas directly, Go ahead, reach your finger here. Look at my hands. Reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving but believing so Jesus says to Thomas you do what you must do he says the important thing is I want you to believe 
I want you to understand, I have risen. This is me, Jesus, who were with you for three years, who told you I would die and rise again. I am alive. I want you to believe. And at that moment, Thomas did not need to touch his hands into the, the, the nails where the nails were. He did not need to touch the side where the spear went. Thomas responded. He said to him, My Lord and my God. There Thomas fully believed that Jesus had resurrected. And not only did he believe, but he surrendered to him completely to be and do to become what it was that the Lord would have him to be. We see a third appearance of Jesus to the disciples. This time, it was the Sea of Tiberias. In John 21, 1, it says, After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. Jesus performs a miracle there. The disciples had fished all night long, had caught nothing. And Jesus just simply spoke and said, Cast over here. They cast the net, and they caught so many that they struggled to bring it in. But I think the most important event there that night wasn't that Jesus performed the miracle, but he restored Peter's relationship with him. Peter denied him three times, just as Jesus predicted. He even became angry and cursed and left and walked away. And Peter went back to fishing, and like the other disciples, they just went back to doing whatever they were doing. But that night, Jesus sat down with Peter, and he asked him three times, Do you love me? And each time, Peter said, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And the third time seems to be out of frustration, in my opinion. Peter says, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus says to him, go feed my sheep. What an event that was for Peter. And maybe you today as a believer, in the weeks, the months, the years past, you have walked away from Jesus too. Maybe it was your job. Maybe it was your hobby. Maybe it was the circumstances. Maybe it was an event. But you just find yourself today not where you once were in your relationship with the Lord. Go back and read John 21 and be encouraged that no, for no matter reason why you left Jesus, He wants to restore your relationship with Him. He's there, not to judge, not to condemn, but to restore. And just as He showed love to Peter that night, He'll show love to you today if you'll just go back to Him. The Scripture states in 1 Corinthians 15 that more than 500 brethren saw Jesus at one time. Now, we don't know any more about this event. We don't know where it was, what took place. But Paul wrote that at one time there was 500 people gathered together when Jesus appeared. So we see that the witnesses wasn't just about those who were with him for three years or those who was part of his ministry, but it extended out even further than that. The Scriptures also says they appeared to James. Exactly which James this is, is a matter of discussion. But there was another witness. But I want to talk about maybe, and in my opinion, the greatest witness of all of the fact that Jesus had risen from the dead. And that is Paul, the Apostle Paul. Now, as a believer, you may know the story. Paul's name was originally Saul. Saul was a Pharisee who, who persecuted Christians tremendously. Saul was at the feet of Stephen when they stoned him to death. Paul had was was known to be one of the greatest persecutor against believers. Didn't matter if they were women or men or children. He sought after them. He arrested them. And he was zealous in what he was doing. And he would carry them to jail and he would have them locked up. And he consented many to the death of believers. And his, his zealousness and in his determination to wipe out the Christian faith 
He received permission from the religious leaders to go to the city of Damascus. There he was to arrest the believers and bring them back to Jerusalem. That was his purpose. That's who he was. This man named Saul, that the Lord later changed his name to Paul, was on his way to Damascus when the Lord appeared to him. And we read in Acts chapter 9, Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogue of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Before he entered into Damascus, before he was able to fulfill his purpose, the Lord himself appeared to this man named Saul. He came in a brightness from heaven, a light that actually was so bright that it blinded Saul. And we read in the next few scriptures the impact that Jesus had upon Saul. Saul, he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, "You, who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goals. So he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were open, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, neither ate nor drank. Now I want you to go back. And, <clears throat> excuse me. He said, Paul, Saul said, With trembling and astonishment, he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And to me, this is so important. This is what the resurrection is about. Here was a man who did not know the Lord, who was against the Lord, who was part of killing people who stood for the Lord. Here was a man who was determined to have nothing to do with Christianity, nothing to do with Jesus, nothing to do. And yet, the Lord appeared to him. And yet this man, with all his determination, surrendered that day, his life, to the one he was once persecuting. Today, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you're doing. What matters is that Jesus is alive. He is risen. What matters is that He loves you. What matters is that resurrection is, was for you. It was for the sins of the world. It was for all mankind. And the Word of God assures us and promises us those who will come to the Lord, the Lord will receive. And here is an example of a sinful, sinful man. And you may say, well, I'm not as bad as Saul, it doesn't matter. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It doesn't matter if you're a good person. If you don't know Jesus, you cannot know of the resurrection. Paul wrote much of the New Testament. This man who was once a persecutor became a great witness. He suffered much for the Lord. But he did so with open arms, and he did so because of the love that he had for the Lord. He did so because of the great transformation that the Lord did in his life. And what many pastors are preaching from this morning, 1 Corinthians 15, makes it clear. And Paul wrote that if the resurrection isn't real, everything we do is in vain is useless, has no reason and no purpose to it. But the resurrection has taken place. And Paul wrote a few passages of Scripture that I want to close with this morning that I think is important to us. 
In 1 Corinthians, begin reading in verse 4, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received and which you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believe in vain. For I deliver to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to Scripture. I just want to look at a few words in these four verses. First, I declare to you the gospel. The word gospel is good news. In this case, the good news of Jesus Christ. Paul wrote to these Corinthian believers that there was something good in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection is good news. Because of the resurrection, millions of believers today are walking in the peace and assurance and knowing that their sins have been forgiven. They're walking with the peace and assurance and knowing that the Lord is a part of their life. They're walking with peace and assurance knowing that one day, whenever they leave this walk of life, they have a place called home with the Lord for all eternity. So yes, the resurrection is good news. But it can also be good news to you they have not yet placed your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, I read it last week, and I want to read it again this morning. Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, and, and verse 13. The Scripture says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. And notice what it says. If you will confess, if you will invite Jesus into your life, if you're willing to turn from where you are to where Jesus wants you to be, and you confess that you invite him, you will be saved. You will be delivered. You will experience the resurrection of Jesus Christ in your own personal life. For the first time, you'll know what peace and hope is. For the first time, you'll recognize the assurance that comes in placing your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For with the heart one believes into righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. And verse 13 says, For whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ is not about our head knowledge. It's about a heart knowledge. It's about believing by faith that there is no other way to be forgiven of our sins. There is no other way to enter into heaven. There is no other way except Jesus Christ. It's a faith issue. Paul also stated, I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture. The third, first thing Paul says, I received it. What I'm preaching to you, what I'm teaching to you, what I'm writing to you is I've already accepted. On that road to Damascus, when Jesus appeared to him in that bright light and, and, and Paul or Saul hit the ground, he recognized and he seen and he understood and he received and he invited. He accepted God's plan and purpose for his life. He said, I've received it. But he said, it's not only about what I've received, it's also about what the Scripture has already stated. From the beginning of time, from Genesis, the promise was given that a Savior would come for the purpose to forgive mankind of their sins. The whole purpose of Jesus coming was to die. Not for anything he had done, but for your sins he died. For my sins he died. For the sins of mankind. Why? Because sin is what separates us from God. Sin is what keeps us from a relationship with God. Sin is what keeps us from entering into heaven. Sin. And yet the scripture is taught throughout that Jesus would come and die the sins of mankind then Paul also wrote and proclaimed that Jesus was buried and that he would rise again the third day again just as the scripture stated you may not want to believe in the resurrection you may say it's just a, a hoax but if you'd go back and begin to read God's word no matter how determined that you believe that the resurrection is not real. No matter how much you believe that the resurrection did not take place, go back and begin to read God's Word and see for yourself. 
if the scripture does not state from the very beginning that Jesus would come and die and rise again. If you would for me this morning, if you're hearing this message or if you hear it at some other time, would you stop long enough and ask yourself, do I know Jesus? Would you stop for a moment and ask yourself, is there any other way that I might be able to get to heaven? And to that I would tell you to turn to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. For Jesus is on the way to heaven. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. There is one mediator between you and God. And the scripture says that man is Christ Jesus. There is no other way. For you that may just be consumed with sinfulness, you may realize, man, I need help. I need some way to get past where I'm at. But there's those out there today who are good people, kind people, caring people. You look at their life, and they're 30, 40, 50, 70, 80 years old, and they've never done really anything that bad because you're such good people. But let me remind you and let me tell you the Word of God says no matter how good you are, your good is as filthy rags. There is only one way to enter into heaven, and that is through Jesus Christ. So today is the Resurrection Sunday. And for the believer, we rejoice and recognize the greatness of this day. But it is my prayer today that while we as believers are rejoicing and thankful that through God's grace and mercy and love that He died for our sins and somewhere back when we recognized that. And once we were a non-believer, but some way, some reason, somehow, through different means, we trusted in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And that's why we celebrate today. And it's been my prayer all week long as I prepared for this message that somehow God would use this message and send forth to a person's heart that has not yet trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. I've been praying for you, some by name, because I know that there's those that may be watching this morning that is a friend of mine that you never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. But I've been praying for you that I don't even know I've been praying, Lord, anyone who does not know you as the Lord Jesus Christ, that today, whether it's through this message or some other message from some other pastor or some other brother or sister in Christ, that you would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. If there was some other event that took place, and you didn't believe, but you began to ask this witness and that witness and this witness and this other witness. And you began to put the pieces together. Because as I said last week, four people watching the same accident, when they come down because of their position, because of what they saw, their stories would not match up exactly. But as you put the four stories together, then you would see the fullness of what had taken place. And so I ask you today, would you be willing to go back and look at all of these witnesses and put all the pieces together? Maybe go back and read the scripture for yourself. But I ask my prayer today that whatever, through whatever means, that you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And this time next year, when we celebrate the resurrection again, that you'll be a part of it that you'll understand that your life has been changed. And the truth is, any believer, resurrection is a 365-day year event. Our Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you, Lord, for the resurrection. Oh, yes, Lord, you rose on one day and one time. But, Lord, it is a life-changing event. 
for those who know you, for those who love you, for those who serve you, Lord, it is a 365-day event. For every day we recognize your resurrection. You are alive and you're living in and through us through the Holy Spirit of God, and we praise you for that. Lord, today, though, I pray for those who do not yet know you. For those who have not yet understood the fullness of this resurrection day that we celebrate. How I pray that millions will come to know you today as pastors throughout this world is proclaiming the good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let souls be saved today. And again, Lord, as we close, we praise you for your constant presence in our life. We praise you, Lord, that you're in control of all things. And let us find hope and trust, peace and assurance through you in the coming weeks, days, and months as we continue to work through the coronavirus. Let us, Lord, be drawn closer to you. Let us as believers take this time to spend more time with you that our relationship with you might be drawn together closer so that when we do come back and able to be among brothers and sisters and those who do not know you, as we're able to come back together in society, that we'll come back with boldness and fullness of sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. God bless you and have a great afternoon uh, as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ.